Welcome to the Cosmic Busker. My name is Bobby Cody. In this video, I want to take a look at the moons of Saturn and what some have termed the Death Star Moon, or as I found out in researching this, the Death Star Moons. Uh, we'll get into why they're called the Death Star Moons in a moment. You can let your imagination go wild if you haven't heard of this already. Um, what these Death Star Moons may look like and what they are. <clears throat> First I want to give a little bit of uh, background on this. I've done some past videos where essentially, you know, me and... Um, it's not something that I have... It's not my own theory, it's based on the works of others, but it appears that our solar system <clears throat> suffered a catastrophe. Uh, in the far distant past, millions, hundreds of millions of years ago, planets exploded. And I believe our solar system, somebody came in and rearranged it in a very, very methodical and specific way. Um, I've done a video on that. I'm going to post a link up to it. Uh, science, and, science and Religion Merge, Our Solar System is a Message is the name of the video. It's a long video. It's about an hour long. But I take you through step by step through the process of why I believe our solar system was created the way it is and this would have happened after the destruction of planets you know planet exploded or maybe more than one planet it caused chaos in the solar system some type of power whether an advanced civilization or let your imagination run wild came in and appears to have rearranged our solar system and in particular uh, the sun, earth, and moon system, the way they interrelate, couldn't have been by chance. The odds of that are billions and billions to one. Somebody came in and moved the sun, earth, and moon so that they <clears throat> were arranged in a very specific way uh, that would send a message. Uh, Again, I'll post another link to another video I did on that. But this that's the context I want you to go into this video with, understanding of that. Uh, somebody had the power to move planets, change them around. This is a super advanced civilization. And now, what I want to take a look at are the moons of Saturn because there's something very, very strange about the moons of Saturn and very unusual. Essentially, it appears that at least one moon, probably based on my research now, it's three. We'll get to that in a moment. And I'll take you step by step through my research process. Um, maybe artificial. They're not natural moons. Uh, they are like the Death Star of Star Wars. They are created artificial structures vehicles that can move around potentially even. <clears throat> so in uh, doing the research on this, um, you know, I had already come to this this theory a while ago, in particular Richard Hoagland Enterprise Mission has done some work on this. I'll post some links to uh, any, uh, to uh, his website down below, Enterprise Mission, where he's done work on this. Uh, but I want to first take a look at Mimas. When I did the research on this, the first one I came across is Mimas as the uh, Death Star Moon. Uh, but it's only one of them I found out. I'll post a picture right now of Mimas and you can see its similarity to the Death Star. It's very unusual. I want to go now to Wikipedia article on Mimas and we're going to take a look at some features of Mimas and then we're going to compare it to some other moons of Saturn too and what this all ties together to mean regarding this Death Star Moon hypothesis. Let's go to this uh, Mimas article right now on Wikipedia. The following quotes come from Wikipedia's article on the Saturn moon of Mimas. Seen featured here. With a diameter of 396 kilometers or 246 miles, Mimas is the smallest astronomical body that is known to still be rounded in shape because of self-gravitation. This is a very important point. 
The low density of Mimas indicates that it is composed mostly of water ice with only a small amount of rock. Now, there's two very important points about Mimas that point to it being very unusual and potentially an artificial object, a created object, not a real moon. I'll put a links up to Mimas up there so you can take a look at what it looks like. Number one, it is the smallest known body to still have a spherical shape. The question is how it got that spherical shape. Naturally, it, it just shouldn't have a spherical shape. That's why it's the smallest known body to have this spherical shape. And it has so little mass and density that it's it's with rotation it shouldn't have had enough mass to attract the 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 matter to retain a spherical shape that's my understanding it's it's and that's why it's the smallest known body with a spherical shape to me that once again um points towards it being an artificial object because nature couldn't have created a sphere like this that size with so little mass and now it also discusses the mass and how little mass it has 1.15 grams per centimeter cubed I think that was and it says well it must be made of mostly water ice with little rock or it's hollow as we would expect a death star to be an artificial object it has rooms inside it's it's hollowed on the inside just like the real death star was or any ship would be <clears throat> so that's where we go with mimas i'm like okay here's more information supporting mimas then then i said wait a minute I, during my research th there's another death star moon it's called iapetus wow okay i, I thought there was only one Let's move on. So you know, I came to, came to the surprising uh, um, information that there are actually two Death Star moons. Okay, now let's take a look at that next Death Star moon. It's called Iapetus. Um, I will put a quick picture up there or up there to show you how Iapetus also looks like the Death Star and it even looks more like a Death Star and there's even more strange information about Iapetus. So let's go to Wikipedia's article on Iapetus and then we'll talk about that. The following citation comes from Wikipedia's article on Saturn's moon of Iapetus. Discoveries by the Cassini mission in 2007 revealed several unusual features on Iapetus, such as a massive equatorial ridge running three quarters of the way around the moon. Wait till you see it. I want to stop right there because that's the, one of the most important aspects of Iapetus. It has this strange ridge running almost all the way around the entire of the moon. Bizarre. Doesn't look natural. It looks artificial and it makes the entire moon of Iapetus look artificial. Uh, that huge ridge is 12 miles high. That's how big it is. And it runs all the way around the equator uh, perfectly looks artificial it, it, it it's a struggle to explain this as natural as you can see it up there uh, it, to my eyes it's almost certainly artificial uh, and the more information you read the more suggestions that it is artificial I'll also put up a picture of the Death Star there so you can see the Death Star has that equatorial uh, ring around it if not a ridge around it as well it's interesting that that's correlation between the two. Let's go back to the Wikipedia article and see what else we can find about Iapetus that suggests it may be artificial as well. The orbit of Iapetus is somewhat unusual. Although it is Saturn's third largest moon, it orbits much further from Saturn than the next closest major moon, Titan. It also has the most inclined orbital plane of the regular satellites. Only the irregular outer satellites like Phoebe have more inclined orbits. 
Because of this distant inclined orbit, Iapetus is the only large moon from which the rings of Saturn would be clearly visible. From the other inner moons, the rings would be edge-on and difficult to see. The cause of this highly inclined orbit of Iapetus is unknown. This is another interesting point. Um, Iapetus is unusual because of its orbit and it takes it above the rings so that you can actually, and it takes them outside the rings as well, so it's above and outside the rings in its orbit. It's the only large moon of Saturn that does that. And as the article states, they don't know why it does that. Uh, Richard Hoagland has suggested there's a reason for it, and I tend to agree with him. It's a moon with a view. If it's an artificial object, it was placed in that specific orbit so it would have a beautiful view of Saturn's rings. Let's uh, take a look at one final citation from this article that is going to point again towards it being an artificial object, a Death Star, and it correlates with Mimas, the first Death Star of Saturn. Let's take a look at this last citation. The low density of Iapetus indicates that it is mostly composed of ice with only a small amount of rocky materials. So just like with Mimas, with Iapetus, they said, wow, it's got such, such a low density, it's got to be mostly ice and not rock. Despite the fact that you look at it, it looks like all rock. Why that discrepancy? because it's hollow, just like an artificial structure or ship or object would be hollow. So that's, that's two moons of Saturn that we found uh, of that nature now. Uh, low density, Iapetus in particular, has a strange ridge around it. Both of them look like the Death Star, very unusual. At that point, I said, in my research, I said, the important thing to look at is the density. Um, here we have two moons of Saturn with very low density that are showing that they may be artificial objects, together with other information. So what other moons, what's the density of the other moons, I wondered? What would I find? So I did some research on the density of Saturn's other moons, and I found one other moon that has a similar, actually a slightly lower density than these two moons of Iapetus and Mimas. Wait till you see what I found. First, I'm going to cut to an article real quick on this moon. It's called Tethys. Uh, it's another moon of Saturn. Let's take a look at what Wikipedia has to say about its density. The following citations come from Wikipedia's article on the Saturn moon of Tethys. Tethys has a low density, the lowest of all the major moons in the solar system, indicating that it is made of water ice with just a small fraction of rock. Okay, so it's at that point I said, okay, so Tethys has this low density, just like the two Death Star moons that I presumed were hollow. What does Tethys look like? Boom. It looks just like the Death Star, just like the other two moons. That wowed me. That really wowed me. Then I continued to read up on Tethys, and I found more suggestions that it, may, it also may be an artificial object a third Death Star moon. Let's take a look at what Wikipedia has to say about the surface of Tethys and its reflectivity, or albedo. The surface of Tethys is one of the most reflective at visual wavelengths in the solar system, with a visual albedo of 1.229. Now, you see how that article states it has a very high albedo? Yeah, 1.299, let me explain something about Beto. A Beto is, is measured from zero to one. Zero means it doesn't reflect anything. All light is absorbed. A black hole would have a 
theoretically that have an albedo is zero. Or one means it reflects everything. Tethys is at 1.229. It more than reflects sunlight. It gives off light somehow. Um, if you take a look at albedo of natural objects, you'll see that none of them exceed one. None of them. No natural objects exceed an albedo of one that I could find. But Tethys does. Why? Well, they, the Wikipedia article will go into an explanation of why. I reject that because you can find almost no other examples of natural objects having an albedo that high. I think that their explanation that they give is, is incorrect, and I think that the reason the albedo is so high is because it's an artificial object. Artificial objects can have an albedo that high, like metal, um, certain terms of plastic, glass, all these have, can have exceedingly high albedo. That's why you see sunlight reflected off and you go like that, because it's actually reflecting off more than it absor absorbing it. It, it, it. I believe the proper way to say it is it, it concentrates the, uh, the energy or the light energy. So, wow, you know, uh, it's been a voyage of discovery where I'm finding, you know, I first thought we were going into this with one Death Star moon. I do research, I find evidence of three Death Star moons, three of them. We have Mimas, and we have Iapetus, and then finally we have Tethys. That's three of them. All of them have low density, exceedingly low density. They say, well, they must be made out of ice. Yeah, well, or maybe they're also hollow. They all have a huge, massive crater on one small, one portion of one side of the moon that just, all three of them have it, that make it look like that that started to make it. How did that get created? Because if that's a real crater or it's something smashed into it, it shouldn't have, the moon shouldn't have been survived that type of smash. It, it, a crater that big, if it was natural, it, it should have smashed the moon up. So how did all three of these moons get that? It's artificial. There was something in there. Perhaps like the Death Star, it was some type of laser beam or what have you. Um, but uh, it's a bit of voyage of discovery, uh, very interesting. Uh, one other aspect of Iapetus I should mention is uh, Iapetus is discolored. One side is all white, the other side is all black. Uh, Tom Van Flandern, who I've covered in past videos, he was uh, chief astronomer of the Naval Observatory. He speculated that Iapetus, uh, the fact that one side is white, the normal color, and the other side is black, like covered with soot, he speculated that's more evidence of the exploding planet that we talked about in previous videos, that a planet exploded in our solar system, and one side I Iapetus was facing the exploded planet, and boom, it got hit by all those charcoal and debris from the exploded planet. The other side of Iapetus wasn't facing the exploded planet, and that's why it's white on the surface. I'll throw up a link, uh, excuse me, a photo to Iapetus so you can take a look at that. So that's all. Um, our three deaths are moons, Mimas, Iapetus, and Tethys on Saturn. Uh, any comments, pro or con, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to... Um, figure out the truth and I do that through getting more information uh, both pro and con so thanks for commenting thanks for watching and everybody have a great day